Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, we're going to look at verses 7 through 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10, the title of the message is, Your Sins Have Found You. Your Sins Have Found You. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10, Your Sins Have Found You. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, uh, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in, do, in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? provide a sermon unto us, Lord, so that we may change our wicked, wicked, vile ways uh, here on earth, Lord. Uh, even though we're saved by your grace and mercy, through faith alone, we're still sinners, Lord. Right. And we don't deserve it, but you still showed your love on the cross at Calvary, uh, shedding your precious blood to atone for all of our sins, Amen. Lord. And we're very grateful for what you did, Lord. And Father God, I pray for anyone that's online watching uh, the, the YouTube ministry, Lord, that if they're on the fence, just hop over that fence and come on over Amen. to the winning Amen. side and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from hell. Amen. Father God, I pray that you fill every single one of us here with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Allow us to have a clear mind, clear heart, and solely focus on the sermon so that we may get a prick in our hearts and change our ways, Lord. Thank you for the day. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Your sins have found you. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 is one of the most famous verses that every preacher and evangelist used to preach against sin. Because you're going to reap what you sow. Whatever sin that you've committed, one day you have to pay for it. There's misconception amongst people, especially unsafe folks, even safe folks as well, where they think that I have a choice of being a sinner. You're already born as a sinner. You're already condemned and judged to burn in hell. It's not a, what if I do this and that? No, you're already a sinner on your way to hell. Then it is reasonable to accept, whether you like it or not, that I am going to commit sin whether I'm saved or unsaved, then according to the word of God, your sins will definitely find you one of these days. That's why as a Bible-believing Christian, you have to be very careful with your sins. If you're committing a lot of sins and you haven't been punished yet, don't think that you're going to get away with it. Right. Because you won't. Because God's law is that you reap what you sow. Then if you tell yourself that I am a sinner, I'm going to commit sin, then I have to make sure that I do something about it. I have to make sure that sin does not rule over me. Let's turn our Bibles to book of Numbers 32. Book of Numbers 32. And we know this is a famous saying, Numbers 32, verse 23. Numbers 32, verse 23. Numbers 32, verse 23. The Bible says, But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. The Bible says, And be sure your sin will find you out. 
in this context, we have two and a half tribes that are saying that we're not going to the promised land. We want to stay where we are. But Moses says then, what are you going to do? They're going to send their you know, military-ready folks to fight until they conquer the promised land. However, if they do not comply and go with the promise, what's going to happen? You know, the Lord will hold every one of them accountable and make sure that their sin will be found out. In your everyday Christian life, your sin will be found out. It's just that it's a matter of time. You cannot think that sinning and having pleasure will just continue and continue. That's something, if you haven't walked out of it, that's something if you haven't been you know, slapped in the face and get a new reality out of it, then you have to wake up. Yes. Because if you don't wake up right now, I guarantee you, your sin will find you, but at the most terrible time, at the most painful time, and at the most undesirable time. Yes. It is just the fact that you and I are weak, the fact that you and I are sinners, only saved by grace, you and I will need to admit to God that I am a weakling and I've been falling over and over and over. Amen. Everybody knows Bill Clinton, right? Former president of the United States, Bill Clinton. Someone asked him, he was right now at this point governor of Arkansas, William Jefferson Clinton. Sir, it has been stated that you have had many adulterous relationships. Is this true or not true? Reporter asked him, Mr. Clinton, with anger in his voice for being asked such a question, looked at reporter in the eye and said, if it was true, I would not tell you. And he walked away from the reporter. He did not tell anybody that he committed adultery. But we know for sure that even if you're governor, president, you know, you're the richest guy in the whole world, yes. Bible says if you have sinned against the Lord, your sin, be sure your sin will find you out. That is a very, very strong, dependable verse that you and I can rely on. Think about it. There's many, many people out there who says, why well, do, you know, just suffer and wicked prosper? Don't worry about it. According to the word of God, God will make sure they pay for their sin. You need to understand that I shouldn't be worried about others anyways. Yes. You know? First point is this. When your sins have found you out, take action on your behalf. You have to take your own action. As you listen to preachings, as you read the Word of God, as you pray, as Holy Spirit of God convicts in your heart and You've been caught red-handed. Lord's telling you, your sins have found you out, whatever it may be. Then you have to take action. Many times, people just hear, they don't do anything about it. That's the problem. Yes. Not just Christian life, just everyday normal days of walking your life. You hear, but you don't do anything about it. And especially when it comes to sin, if your sins have found you, which for every single one of us, our sins have found us many, many times on a daily basis, yes. you have to take action. Amen. You have to do something about it. Yes. You can't just stay still and expect that thing to just go away. Right. It's not a magic portion where you, or potion like you just drink it and you go, oh, my sin's just gone. You know, No. It stays with you. And you have to pay for it. And you have to deal with it. Yes. You know, many, many 
times you hear from the world, you hear from the school, you hear from the public that you're okay. You're not okay. They say you're good. You're not good. They say you're strong. No, you're weak. Yeah. They say you're the best. All no, right. honestly, you're the worst. That's right. You and I should think of us as the worst people in the whole world. Yeah. Why? Because unlike the safe folk, uh, unsafe folks out there, Save folks like you and me, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we have the blessing, greatest blessing, to have Jesus Christ in us as our Lord and Savior, Amen. and we're also sealed with the Holy Ghost inside of us. But we abuse it. Knowing not, right? Our bodies are temple of the Holy Ghost. And that includes your minds as well. How much, how many times have you committed sin against the temple of God and you did nothing about it? If you don't take any, any actions about it, it's like this. You know, we have a church building here. And of course, we're a body of Christ. And just for the illustration's sake, you know, you throw your own feces at the building. Each time. And it's your own building. Can you imagine? Like if you have a business, you know, somewhere in downtown LA, and we hear it here and there where this homeless man will throw his own feces at the buildings, cars driving by. You know, they're out of control. But how are you so different? How am I so different? You know, our body is the temple of God, right? Yeah. And you defile it by committing sin day in and day out. Mm. And when you compare your sin, to me, I mean, it's dirtier than feces out there. That's right. I mean, it's the most despicable thing. That's why Jesus Christ had to come down from heaven and die for you and me, shedding his precious blood. Why? Because of our sin. Then if that sin that you're doing is so despicable, and it's the worst thing. You just kind of keep on throw it at yourself. When I look at yourself in the mirror, how would you look? During the World War, you know, people are trying to escape from Nazis, and they hid in you know, those sewers down there. Yes. And those are full of, you know, human excrements, smelly. But they want to avoid getting captured, and they're full of it. And I guarantee you, after they stay there for hours, even days, and come out, you know, those smells going to stick with them. Mm. They don't disappear right away. Good, you know? sure. It's like it's going to be on your skin. Even if you wash yourself over and over and over, what do you think? The smell is still going to be there, yeah. that residual smell. Same thing, but some of you don't even wash it. You don't even care about it. Like, people are looking at you. I mean, Lori is looking at you, and you're looking at yourself in the mirror as well, and you're full of this, you know, dirty stuff, full of sin, but you don't do anything about it. And then you, you're forgetting, because Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived. And this is a commandment. It's not, you know, you do it when you feel like it. It's not an option. The Word of God says, be not deceived. Because you deceive your own selves. Yes. I deceive my own selves thinking that it's okay. It is okay for me to just continue living this sinful life. And I'm just going to ask for forgiveness later and later in life. Maybe it's not even a sin because God hasn't punished me yet. Wow, you're tempting Christ over and over and over. You're justifying your sins. Why is it that you and I, we, through preachings, through the Word of God, even right now, getting pricked by the Holy Ghost that, hey, your sins have been found out. You got to do something about it. 
judgment. Your sins have been found out. You have to get right with the Lord. Your sins have been found out. You know, you have to get, you know, clean. You got to go to the Lord and confess your sins. Why is it that you don't do anything about it? Because you don't really care about Lord's commandment. Because you don't really care about things of God. Because you're so backslidden that these things don't even bother you. I mean, that's like a horrible state to be in as a Christian. When there's word of God preached at you, when the Holy Spirit God is trying to prick you, trying to let you know what you're doing is wrong, but instead of you getting sorry for your sins, instead of you getting convicted of those sins that's been found out, you're just like living your everyday life like nothing happened, nothing's wrong. You are in such a backslidden state, sooner or later, your sin will really, really find you out. As in what? You're going to sow sooner than later. Lord always gives you and I much grace and mercy. If it were up to us, we'll just punish the people who defiles you know, our body defiles the church, who does not obey our commandments. But Lord's not like that. That's why Lord and I were different. However, Lord's just God. After enough chances, he has to take action, especially if he loves us as a loving father whom chastises his loving children, then he has to do it. Where are you standing today when it comes to that? Now, your sins have been found out. Whether you realize it or not, because none of you guys are Jesus Christ himself, right. you're sinners. Yes. Right. And you're committing multiple sins in your life. Whether big or small, sin is a sin. Yes. Then what are you doing about it? What are you going to do about it now that your sins have been found out? Don't just sit there and do nothing. You have to take action. And some smart alecky person goes, no, what kind of sin are you talking about? You know, let's go to a few places in the Word of God. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And if you can honestly tell me or any of the people around you that I don't commit these sins, you know, I'll say you're perfect. Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7, verse 20. We're going to look at Mark chapter 7, verse 20. The Bible says, And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. You never had evil thoughts? of all trees, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride. Oh, none of you guys were ever prideful. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. I mean, shamefully, I mean, I committed this stuff, right? And at least some of them. And you're telling me that, oh, I don't do any of this? Yeah. Who are you fooling? Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. The Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies. Oh, you never envied anything? Anyone? Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, I mean, if you have not committed any of those things, you're a liar, first of all, you know, because you and I are not perfect. 
Now let's go to one more passage. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. It has to wake you up. It has to wake me up that you and I do have sin problems and sins have found us. What are we going to do about it? Right. We have to take action. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. How many of you guys are really selfish? You know? I, mean, I, for one, am a selfish person. You and I are born as a selfish people. Yeah. Covetous, bolsters, proud. Man, aren't you already proud right now that, hey, I'm better than the person next to me, behind me, surrounding me? I have more than them. You know, I look better than them. Uh, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. I mean, how many of you guys are perfect children? Young people here, you never disobeyed your parents? I'm sure you disobeyed your parents this morning, right? They told you to get out of the bed, you know, get ready for church. No, no, few more minutes. No, wash your face right, brush your teeth. No, you know, get dressed. No, I mean, your answer is always no. But same thing, don't look at just the children. You and I do the same thing to our God. Yes. I said, hey, it's time for you to do this. No, Lord. Time for do that. No, Lord. Time to do this. No. <laughs> I mean, certain commandments. Study to show thyself proven unto God a workman that needed not to question, but rightly by the word of truth, right? Second, <laughs> Second Timothy 2.15. And Lord said, study, but you don't. Then you're telling God, I'm, I don't want to listen to you. Right. Like a child going through puberty. But funny how Christians are in puberty all their life, many of them. Yeah. I mean, that's embarrassing as a Christian. You're always moody. You're always emotional. You let your flesh dictate your life, control you. You let the world and the devil influence you greatly, more than they should ever. And you just go, Lord. You tell me to do this and do that, you don't know me. And I thought, like how you tell your parents, uh, you don't know what I'm going through. And, I mean, when Lord Jesus Christ went through every emotion, every pain, every suffering that you and I can ever go through, he went through it in the form of a flesh. And you're like, no. Before you look at young children for being disobedient to parents, which you tend to do because some of you are parents, some of you are older. But look at yourself. I mean, I am disobedient to God, my Father. When you realize that, you're like, oh, man, something's really wrong with me. You know, that's why I don't get pricked. That's why when I hear preaching about sin, it doesn't really bother me anymore. You know, if you don't care about it, would you take any action? No. Right? Then if you haven't taken any actions all this time, what does that tell you? You don't really care. You don't care about the word of God. You don't care about preaching. You don't care about God at all. You don't care about what Lord Jesus Christ did for you. If those were significant, if they were dear to you, if you were sincerely thankful for it, then you and I will take some kind of action. If someone gave you a million bucks because you're in financial dire straits, you're going to be like, oh, thank you so much. And you're going to go to the person personally and be thankful for it. You're going to show it in action. Unless you're really, really, you know, considered punk, proud. I deserve a million. Why don't you give me 10 million? You know, not like that. But those are not normal. But just as a normal human being, you'll be like, I'm thankful. However, when you do think about it deeply, Jesus Christ gave up everything and died for you and me. Literally, everything, and shed every drop of his blood so that we can have eternal life. So that after we got saved, we can actually live as a ministers and servants of Lord Jesus Christ. But how many times have you actually did something 
when something in between is stopping you from having great relationship with him, which is called sin. Nothing else. It's not someone in front of you. It's not someone behind you. It's not the environment. It's not the society. It's sin. Amen. It's your sins, by the way. Yes. Well, don't look at other people's sin. You, know, you and I should never become a people of excuse. My husband made me do it. If my husband had more money, I wouldn't be like this. My wife, she made me do it. If she was more loving, if she had more money, I wouldn't be doing this, right? Your children, right? My parents made me do it. If they had more money, I wouldn't be like this, right? And you, you go to your grandma and grandpa. If my grandpa and grandpa had more money, I wouldn't be doing this. Why? Because, you know, Love of money is root of all evil. Yes. And he translates to it. Then you have to look at yourself. Obviously, you have to do your best. If your husband, your wife, and your children are not doing best, then there's a cause for concern. There's a cause for criticism. However, if they're doing their best, and Lord's feeding you, and Lord has provided you all your need, not what your wants, what's to complain about? I mean, you have your own mansion waiting for you in heaven. Amen. I mean, you and I can't even imagine how good it's going to be. Right. We're just a pilgrim and stranger going through this world. Amen. Right? Yes. Why do you have to have a mansion here on earth? That's right. You need that, you know, I mean, housing price is crazy, but do you need that now $5 million, $10 million house? No. What are you trying to prove? So you want to invite more people to your home to show that this is what I have, this is what you don't have? Mm -hmm. I mean, same thing with any, any material, right? Whether yeah. it's house, whether it's car, yeah. whether it's gadgets or anything. Why do you want it in the first place? Is it because to look good against other people? Is it because you're so envious and covetous? Because you feel jealous? You want other people to feel envy, jealous towards you? Is that the reason why? I mean, why do you think society is so messed up with all the social media? Amen. Right? Twitter, Facebook called Meta now. Yeah. And then you have a bunch of other stuff, YouTube, TikTok, and anything. Why do people usually do it? Why do people do crazy stuff? But they want to show to people that, you know, I have something that you don't have. Right. And people follow like a blind sheep, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Even though I can't have it, just looking at that person having it makes me feel good. Right. You know? I mean, that's how your mind has gone down to the gutter. Yes. It has deteriorated to the point where sin is no longer sin. Your sins have been found out brethren, Amen. there's no excuse. Yes. Because everyone here and everyone listening and me also, we have sins that we have to take action against. Yes. And we have sins that we haven't taken action against for such a long, long time. Yes. Long, long time. Right. That's why you and I are hearing this message. Because those sins, if you and I don't take care of it today, you have to have some urgency. If you don't take care of it now, don't wait until later in the day. If you don't take care of it now, then what's going to happen? You really are going to see what it means to be Galatians 6, 7. You reap what you sow. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Oh, man. When you truly, truly think about that verse, you and I are mocking God with our sinful ways. Can you imagine? If Almighty God is right in front of you, you're spitting at him, you're cussing at him, and then whatever he tells you, you receive it like a kid, disobedient kid. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, you tell me to clean up, you tell me to do this and that. You know, mommy, daddy, uh, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like daydreaming, you're thinking about a bunch of other stuff so that you don't even concentrate to what your parents are saying. Same attitude, yeah. you and me, no different. God's pricking you in your heart. Lord's telling you, you better wake up. Stop doing A, B, C, D through Z 
sinful, sinning, everything that relates to sin in your life, stop doing it. You have to stop. It's for your own good. What are you going to do about it? As they say, balls in your court. Indeed, balls in every one of our courts. We have to do something about it. Continuing, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Disobedient to parents, unthankful. So anybody going to say you've been thankful for everything all the time, whether it's good or bad? I doubt it. I know 100% you haven't been. <laughs> thankful people are always joyful. Always, always. Can I ask your wife that you've been a joyful person 24-7 since you guys got married? You know, can I ask your husband that you've been a joyful person since you guys have been married? Been thankful for everything? All the trials and suffering that's coming in your way or have come your way? Were you guys even thankful for that? No. Unholy. Oof. I mean, how can you? Uh, Lord's like doing, he's making us, you know, be very shameful. It's making me shameful, unholy. I mean, anything that's not holy is unholy. Anything that's not pure, clean, yes. unholy, right? Have you ever had, you know, wicked thoughts? Yes. I mean, dirty thoughts, right? Have you ever had hateful thoughts? Yes. Angry thoughts? Yes. Like, someone does this thing to you instead of just leaving it on Lord's hand. You're like, man, I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to get after that person. And they're going to pay, right? I mean, I mean, that's just one of the thoughts that you go through on a daily basis probably for some of you. Things that you see, right? Your sins have found you. The Lord's like, okay, your body Everything's mine. That's what the Lord says, right? Bought with a price, with his precious blood. Mm. Your, your feet's not doing anything bad, right? Your hand necessarily isn't doing anything bad either. Your mouth, mm, try to stay clean. Man, but your eyes. Yeah. You're forgetting about your eyes. What are you watching on a daily basis? Why do people want things that they don't need? Because of TV, internet, commercials everywhere, advertisement. Sometimes you never even thought about this product existed. And suddenly it comes out on your pop-up. Oh yeah, I need that, right? Sometimes you never thought about it and you hear some news story about somebody. Oh, I need to be like that person. Why doesn't it happen to me? Your eyes. What are you doing about your eyes? Your sins have found you, and a lot of times it's because of your eyes. Amen. You have committed those sins. Yes. And Lord's telling you to be careful with what you see. More than hearing. Be careful with what you see. Be careful with what you see together as a family. Yes. Be careful. Amen. If you do not guard your eyes... And if you don't wake up and guard your eyes, you will continue to be in that sinful state. You'll never get out of it. Don't kid yourself. Don't kid me. You and I will not be able to get out of whichever sinful state you're in. Unless you stop seeing that thing. Unless you stop blocking yourself from seeing that thing. Unless you completely, on your mind, tell yourself, no more. No more. There are so many godly things to look at. Yes. The Word of God, the nature, right? right. You, know, you have your spouses. Hey. And they're your other half, right? Yes. You know, your children. You know, getting people, seeing people getting saved, receiving tracts. Hey. You know, yes. Even if they're rejected, at least they heard the gospel. Amen. There's so many things, godly things out there. But you are constantly, constantly absorbing wicked things. Then you will never, 
never take the right action when the sins have found you because you're adding more sins to it. You know, it's like the filter system, bad filter system. You're trying to get rid of, you know, this dirt and debris from your water filter. Because filtering system doesn't work well. Like, you drink it, and then you, you feel these rocks. You feel this sand. You feel, I mean, watercolor is not even clean. It's still brown, green, black, yellow. You know, every color is out there. Because the system is wrong. They're not filtering it right. You yourself in your life, when it comes to sin, you have to have a right filtering system. Uh, if you look at stuff, wicked stuff, over and over, yeah. how do you expect to get out of it? Come on. I mean, okay, it's 7 in the evening. It's time for me to look at this stuff again. It's like, it's like you're like a robot. Okay, oh, this show is my favorite show. You know, I need to have some kind of fun in my life. Yeah, I mean, it has some, you know, no cussing at all, but it's got every worldly thing in there possible, right? right. You know, it's got all the you know, adulterous scenes everywhere. It's got violence everywhere. Yes. But you know what? I need to have my own fix. If it were that bad, you know, maybe Lord would have done something to me already. Man, what a stupid way of thinking. That's right. you know, just because Lord hasn't, you know, you know, killed you right now, you're like, oh, I'm okay. You know? It's not okay. Right? I mean, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Yes. Yeah. Thank God. Be thankful that you and I are not there right now. Amen. If it were up to me, and they acted like that towards me, I mean... They're gone already, right? Yes. But thank God that he has shown enough grace and mercy to you and me. Continuing, verse 3, without natural affection, we know it. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. That's the natural affection. That's right. right? Anything outside of that? It's unnatural. Yes. It makes no sense. It's choice. You're making your own choice to become a transgender, right. to become a homosexual. I mean, whatever there's out there, bi binary, non-binary, hinary, mulberry, everything out there, <laughs> right? You know, you call yourself, you know what? I look like a man. But I'm going to use woman's restroom because today I feel like a woman. Wicked. I, can't, I can't imagine how school system is nowadays. Yeah. Wicked. I mean, like the sister said, it's worse than in jungle because jungles still have some system That's amongst right. animals. Yes. Right? They have hierarchies out there. But nowadays, you know, what's worse than a jungle? Well, I guess we better come up with a word that's worse than a jungle out there. Utter chaos, confusion everywhere. I mean, as a Bible believer, you have to speak the truth. Amen. And if you've been shy about speaking up the truth, when you're supposed to say the right things, you don't say it, that's a sin. Amen. Or are you going to let the world stop you from telling the truth? Speaking up the truth. Obviously, you have to be wise about it. Wise as a servant, harmless as a dove. Ask God for wisdom. But you should never compromise your way. You should never feel like, oh, I feel so bad today. Man, I knew I should have said something. I knew I should have stood for the word of God. I knew I should have, I should have, I should have. You and I should stop having I should have moments. Amen. There are too many I should have moments going on in your life. In my life, every life, right? Don't you think that God will take care of you? Why do you think that your boss has to take care of you? Your company has to take care of you? you know? Why do you think that your friends have to take care of you? At the end of the day, the most important thing is you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you stand up for Lord Jesus Christ, then everything's going to be all right. There's going to be... You know, trials here and there. There's going to be hardships. Yes. But you have peace in your mind. Amen. 
because I done the right thing. I chose the Lord instead of everything else. If you and I are afraid of this society, you and I are afraid of what the society will do to us, we can never be a good Christian. That's right. We can never be a Bible-believing Christian. You can even be an okay Christian. You have to make sure that whenever you have a chance to choose the Lord, Jesus Christ, yes. or everything else, the world, the flesh, and the devil, you choose Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's part of the action that you can take, especially when your sins have found you. Because I know we live in a very difficult society. Everything's politically correct. You don't have to say it sometimes. Your actions will show. Yes. If they go to that place, you just don't go. They're going to a bar, you just don't go. They're drinking wine, saying it's okay, Jesus drank wine, using that excuse, you know, forever. You don't drink it. New wine, okay. Old wine, alcohol, I'm not going to drink it. Just stay, you know, a lot of junk going on. Nope. You could fire me. I'm not going to be there, right? And you know what? You know, maybe I'll get to you, too, because you discriminate against standing for my own rights. Right? You let everybody else have their own rights. You don't give me rights as a Christian. Right. You know, what kind of country do we live in? This isn't Russia or North Korea or Cuba. It's hey, still a free hey. country. Yep. Yes. Then, if they could stand up for their rights, why don't you ever stand up for Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, Continuing, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good. Right? Especially when you live in sin and your sins have found you out. And if you have angry reaction, if you're fierce, you're full of sin. If you're a very angry man, you have a problem. Yes. If you're an angry woman, you have a problem. If you're very fierce, you have a problem. There's issue in your heart. And you know, one of the preachers always said, you have an issue with your sexual immortality, immorality in your life. A lot of times angry people, because they don't, they're not pure. That's why it happens. Right. Something about those two, you know, the you know, preacher preached on it in the past. It makes sense, right? If you get easily angered, you have some you know, moral issues in your life. Definitely. Yes. And it has to do with wicked stuff, yes. like lasciviousness. You know? Look into it. Look into your heart. Like look into your mind. Look into Amen. your life and yes. see where, where is it? Where is it going, right? I mean, you got to be faithful if you're married just to your spouse. Nobody else, yes. right? I mean, your sins have found you out. And some people are unfaithful to, to their spouses because they don't see them and because they're not with them outside of work. I mean, outside of home. Right. So you're at work, you know, your best friend is, you know, this Jane Doe or John Doe, you know, you love spending time with them. And when you come home, like, you know, your wife or your husband is nothing. Wow. You know, you never converse, you never show affection or love or, you know, charity towards each other. What do you think is going to happen? If you're unfaithful to your spouses, how do you think you're going to be faithful to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And then women, you know, especially emotional. You don't have to give your physical body to another person to be unfaithful. You give him your heart, you're unfaithful already. It's like, oh, man, I hate having conversation with my husband because he don't listen. I mean, they have a lot of faults. I mean, men have a lot of faults, you know, more faults than women, I think, sometimes, yes. right? Yes. But man, this guy at work listens to my problems. You, should, you shouldn't be discussing personal issues with someone other than your spouse anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then lovely person, you know, always being nice to me. 
And what do you think that's going to lead to? One thing leads to the other, and then stuff happens. Yes. And this stuff happens in Bible-believing Christian church. We're not just talking about unsaved folks out there. We're talking about things that's happening at every Bible-believing church. Amen. Why does that happen? Why? Because your sins have been found out, but you're not doing anything about it. You let it continue and continue and continue, then that unfaithfulness will continue and continue and continue until you have to sign that paper with the worst testimony possible, you get divorced. And because of you, because of your, your action. Yes. That's why you have to really check, go to the Lord, and get right with the Lord. You know, verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know, I think that sums it all. Your sins have found you out. Why? Because you're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. For that season, for that moment of pleasure, you choose your flesh, the world, and the devil, then God. Simple as that. Yeah. And there has no temptation taken you, but such as common to man, but God is faithful. Amen. He will make sure that you and I receive you know, testing or whatnot that we cannot bear. Even throughout the week, think about it. We saw all this list of sins. And some of them, you have been committing it left and right over and over and over. And Lord, by his grace, Thank God for his grace and mercy have shown to you and me. Okay. Okay, son. Okay, daughter. Now your sins have found you. If you had any doubts before, have no doubt. Your sins have found you. And remember my words. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, thou shall he also reap. It's a warning to you, son. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay where you are and continue in your pleasures and go down your way of destruction? Many a great Christians, so-called, have fallen because the Lord showed them their sins, found it, but they had, didn't do anything about it. Right. I mean, sometimes we see great preachers great man of God, suddenly dropped it. They're done. But news comes out, stories comes out, you know, they had some marital issues, right? They were like unfaithful, you know, they had some addiction problems and stuff. Those things will eventually come out. Yes. Don't you ever want to be in front of God without any shame, like clean, right? Yes. Wouldn't that be a, such a great feeling? Like, no guilt, no shame, no weight in your heart and mind. Lord, I brought everything to you. You've shown me all the sins. All those sins have finally found me. I know you did before. Now you finally found me. I'm going to get right with you, Lord. Yes. And I'm going to confess my sins in very detail. I'm going to turn from those things. I'm going to turn to you. Just like 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. I'm going to do it, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. Man, if you have that time with the Lord, sincerely, I guarantee you, your burdens will be lifted. Amen. You will always have that burden as a Christian yes. if you do not get right with the Lord. Even though sins have found you, if you don't do anything about it, it will weigh you down. Right. That's how you and I are now. I mean, we trust that Christ. He lives in us. You know, we're still with the Holy Ghost. Yes. If we don't live right with the Lord, we'll never have peace. And we'll be carrying that 100-pound rock, 200-pound right. rock. For some, probably like 1,000-pounders, you're carrying it with you right now Amen. because you have not gotten right with the Lord. The choice is yours. 
that's the greatest part, is that it's up to you to do it. Yes. No one has to force you to do it. You don't have to force you be forced to do it. It's voluntary. It's from your heart. You can either get right with the Lord, start out clean. Man, isn't that the greatest thing? Amen. Man, you and I, of course, you know, we reap what you sow. But however, you can confidently say that I'm starting over. Man, with a full white page, you know, clean slate, because I got to right with the Lord. In order to do that, you have to get rid of all those sins that have found you. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Dear Father, it's been struggle for every one of us when it comes to sin. Your word said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. We're continuously getting deceived and mocking you, Lord. Even though you have shown us the sins that we need to get right, we ignore it, we become just lovers of pleasure and disobeying you and continue to go on like as if it's nothing wrong. Help us to truly come to you from bottom of our heart and get right with you and start with a clean slate. And I know that many Christians, including myself, we live in sin, it has that burdening effect, no peace, you know, everything is just down. I mean, our burdens can be lifted that through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, sins are washed away, Lord. I pray that every one of us here listening will get right with you, Lord, and just clean, be clean, be holy, serving you, Lord God. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the service, the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay.